Hey, good morning. You know, I've been lying to myself over these years. I've been trying to fool myself into believing I can catch a perch at any time, any day. I'm just that good. But in reality, you need the tide. The tide is what matters for the perch bite. I've been lying to myself, thinking I could do it without it. But I'm here today at the right time, and I'm gonna catch some big perch. First cast. I woke up at 4.15 today, and I'm early enough where I can throw a couple casts with the jig, just trying to get lucky. After this, I'm gonna get the sand crabs I need to guarantee myself some fish. I'm trying to keep the jig at the bottom of the ocean too. A lot of these times, these light jigs, they've got a tendency to ride up in the surf. So I'm reeling it slow enough where I can stay near the bottom. Ooh, that's a big wave. Tide's coming in for another three hours. I'm walking back because all this water is going to push forward. And if I'm down there in the deep water, all this water rushing out can wash me out. No doubt about it. You against 100,000, 2 million gallons of water, more than that. You can't stop it. So once these sand crabs start washing up, that's when these perch are feeding and they've been waiting all night to feed. At least that's what's in my head. Oh, right, we got a few and a couple softies too. I could not ask for anything more than that. Oh man, there's a big wave coming right here. Ah, that's what you gotta watch out for, especially with that incoming tide. I'm putting my soft shell sand crab on my one-aught hook. Might be big for perch, but trying to go for something big so just one time through the back and here's a little trick you probably already know this but when I'm out here sometimes it's easy to get tangled especially if you're using the fish finder rig since I'm using the egg sinker I feel like this and it's true in my own experience I've had less tangles with this this line stays a lot more straight but when you get the fluoro or the mono off your spool sometimes it does have a tendency to keep that twisted memory in it. So what you can do to straighten that out is just run it through your hands. The friction between your fingertips creates enough heat where it resets the memory. All right, Daniel said the current's going this way, so I'm gonna cast upstream and let it drift down. Wait till this wave breaks out here, just cast straight over it. Keep my sand crab out of the water so it doesn't come off. All right, we're light, super lightweight. We've only got one ounce. So this bait is just going to drift right along the surf real fast, real fast, maybe too fast. I might need to add another weight. I'm retrieving it at a kind of a steady, steady pace. So I'm trying to find the fish. Ooh, that water is strong. You know, I wanted this video to be really chill, but it's hard to be chill when there's only one hour left to fish. We're changing spots. I got to pack up my gear, walk down the beach half a mile now. I think I see a hole down there by the rocks. And sometimes this calm water just shows up very, very briefly. And it's hard to identify where the hole is when you take your eye off of it. But I think I see it coming up on it. Man, it's beautiful out here, huh? I don't know if you've noticed lately, but we've been having some gorgeous sunsets and sunrises lately. So if you haven't seen them recently, set aside a little time for yourself. Go outside and enjoy that sunset. It's a beautiful thing, y'all. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Dude, I mean, wow, let's go, man. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We got one, we got one. We got one. It feels like a good one, too. It feels like a good one. <laughs> I was swimming over here to the side. All right, now we got it. might get tangled up on this rock right here. Uh oh, it, I think it might. I think it might. Where is it? Where is it? Right here, right here. Okay. Okay, okay. It's a good one, dude. I don't think it's keeper. I'm going to let it go. On the little sand crabs, I put three of them on the hook. That's a red tail. The same one that Trong drew for me. Beautiful perch, man. Freaking beautiful. Hooked him right on the lip, too. That's a good one, man. They gotta be 10 and a half. That one's actually kind of close. See you later, buddy. Nice, dude. 
Got him, man. So this is how I was doing it. Three, three hard shells. Right, boom, on the hook. Just like that one time. Either through the back or through the belly. Just like that. Now I got a handful of other ones too. Let's cast straight to the rock again. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's chunky. Yeah. You got a measuring tape? I do not on me. Alright, I do. That's nice, bro. Yeah. Oh, I just got hit. Got a nice hit right here. A lot of birds off in the distance. Probably a lot of bait out there. Now I could keep fishing the sand crabs, but Daniel just caught that one on a sandworm. And these sandworms stay on the hook so much better than the sand crab. And I don't have to worry about finding more. So, so that's what I'm gonna switch to. The Berkeley Gulp Sandworm. Tried and true. It's been a go-to for perch fishermen for decades. It is time to catch one on the sandworm. Back to our roots. Dude, this one feels decent too. Little small. Little small. Getting there. It's about the same size as my other one. Come on, Jumbo. There's a good one. There's a decent one. All right, baby, on a jig, jigging it, you know? Oh yeah, baby! Let's go, that's a, that's a good one. I was just thinking of, uh, just thinking if I were the sandworm, I would be kind of moving a little bit, so I was just jigging it. And then right when I, you know, on the drop, man, on the drop. This one's a keeper. On the drop, on the surf. This one's a keeper, y'all. Okay, well, oh yeah. That's a keeper, right? Is that a keeper? Where's your tape? Okay, okay, nice. This one's close, man. This one's really close to 10 and a half. That's, it's got a lot of meat. Let's go measure it. Like, oh my goodness, the fork is right on the tip, right on the tip. But that would be the perfect size. So because of that, I am going to keep them. I'm going to keep them. Woo! 10 and a half, about an eighth of an inch above 10 and a half which is really, really close. And sometimes after they're, they've been dead, they have a tendency to shrink a little bit. I'm gonna put some water, keep him alive. And we're gonna cook him really fresh so he's not gonna have a chance to shrink on us. It's a nice one. She's not pregnant either, or he's not. Whatever it is, there's no babies in it. Keep him, keep him fresh in the water. When you buy these sandworms, they'll either come in two inch pieces or six inch pieces. I like my pieces three inches. So I'll buy the six inch ones and I'll just break them in half with my thumb. And then I'll take my hook and just as if I were threading on a swim bait kinda, I would put it straight through the body, over the barb, keeping it as close to the middle of the sandworm as possible. Take it out about halfway through and then I'll thread the worm over the knot and over the eye of the hook. So part of the worm is on the line, part of it is on the hook. It's got a nice profile and it looks like a little jig head with a swim bait. Well, without the jig head, but it looks like how you would hook a swim bait on a jig head. And the last time when I was just out there, I gave it some jigs. And I've noticed that. I haven't had you know, too much luck perch fishing, but I have noticed that if I jig it, like after that movement, Something about that triggers a bite. So that's what I'm gonna do again. Hopefully get another keeper. Limit is 10 perch per day. You see, I feel like the two inch ones are a little bit short, but this is just the right size. And these have been dried for about 15 days. So they're not as moist and they stay on the hook a little bit better. I've learned that from PKE, Perch King. Let's go check this side out. I feel like we'd be a fool not to. We're so close to it. There's a lot of good structure here. We might as well. Big wave, big wave, big wave, big wave. All right, let's get back to Daniel. Oh no, oh I got a fish, nice one, a nice one, a nice one. 
Yeah, this feels good, dude. This could be good. Uh, maybe it felt bigger because of the waves. But it's not bad. That could be a keeper, too. That's close, man. Yeah, he's short. He's just short. I better get him in quick. Just short. Get him alive. Resuscitated. Only gonna let him go once he starts kicking. There he goes. All right, see you, buddy. Now I'm walking along the shoreline. I know the bite is on, but there could be a more productive spot. I already got my keeper, so now I'm just looking for a concentration of fish to start hammering them. This could be it right here. It looks like a rip current. Sometimes the fish like to stay right on the edges of the rip current. Found them again, y'all. That's a bard, which would be legal, but I'm gonna let it go in hopes of getting another one right here. All right, buddy, see you later. See this sandworm? I've used it a lot and it's getting tore up. There's nowhere to keep the hook anymore. So when it's on its last breath, you can just hook it through the back. Just like that. And you can even cut it in half. Now it's got a little bit of extra life. And there you just prolonged your bait even further. Just changed spots to a new location just on the south side of Daniel. Caught a nice one, man. And this hole looks really good. This one, it's just on the edge. Let it go. In case you're curious, this is a nine foot four Lama Glass red line, casts a quarter ounce to five eighth ounce. And it is the Shimano Stratic, size 3000. A lot of people use that for steelhead and stuff. But I've got that with 30 pound braid, going to my, looks like one ounce egg sinker, down to a bead, down to a regular swivel. And this is down to 20 pound fluorocarbon, about a four foot liter. Right now, looks like they're biting on anything. Pretty wide open. Camo, red, sand crab. It's time to go. Daniel's here too, ready to cast. Let's get him. I'm gonna let this one go, it's like just barely. Good. Oh, nice, Daniel, with a nice oh. one. Oh, don't even have to measure that no, one. 100%, you don't. Bro. <laughs> uh, woo. Look, the sand is so soft here, I can literally dig into them. And every handful, I'm getting about six. Just watch. Okay, let's let this water wash the sand out. That's what we got so far. If I'm out a little bit far in the surf, when I change bait, I always take several steps back because my focus is not on the waves at this very moment. And you need your focus completely in a dangerous situation, which surf fishing is. So many people get swept away every year, not paying attention or not, not being familiar with the ocean. So I always just at least take the extra precaution to step back a few steps when I'm not giving my utmost respect to the ocean, you know what I mean? Let's go, another one. So I still wanna fish more, but I also wanna get this fish prepped. So I'm gonna do that, get it going in a marinade, and then I'm gonna fish a little bit more. That's beautiful, red tail perch. I'm gonna keep my cutting board dry. I'm gonna dispatch it, bleed it, scale it. First things first, Let's cut it in its head right here behind its spine. Actually, we'll, we'll stab it first. There, you can see his eyes go back a little bit and he's done for. Now, as I get older, I don't know if I'm just getting soft or what, but I don't know. I have a, maybe it's more respect for the fish or I don't know what it is exactly, but Sometimes I just don't like to kill the fish. You know, like if I'm underwater fishing and I catch a big lingcod, it might be hard to keep one, especially if it's a big one and I catch it on live bait. So at least 
I'm going in with the attitude that I'm really thankful for catching this fish and I am taking its life after all. So I want to have that same mentality as I'm eating it and just be fully aware and appreciate the food that I'm eating. So as that bleeds out a little bit, his heart's still beating. Stabbed it and even though it's dead, its heart is still beating. Now I'm going to get my scaler. All right, it'll continue to bleed. And I'm just going to scale it going backwards on the scales here. Getting all the scales off, especially behind the fins here, as close to the top dorsal fin as possible and the bottom dorsal fin because we're going to cook this fish whole and we want to get as many bones out as possible. So we're going to do the same thing on both sides. Just scale her, just scale her down. All right, rinse off the scales. Really nice to have a bucket full of water at your disposal in arm's reach. Now I'm going to gut it and most likely when I gut it, there's going to be a lining of something black along its internal cavity and I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that is I used to think it was pollution but let's see if this has it and you tell me if you know what it is because a lot of perch have it a lot of smelt have it I used to think it was just oil but I don't know what it is rip off all the gills Cut out from under the guts, and then you can pull the whole thing out. All right? I don't want to throw it too far, or else you know the seagulls are coming. But take a look at that. That was exactly what I was talking about, the, the black. So I'm just going to scrape that out. Probably just fine to eat, but I'm not going to eat it. And you see, once you scrape it out, it gets clear. So whether it's just a mental thing, or if it actually is something that could do you harm, Whatever it is, I always feel better taking it out. Now these surf perch are notoriously known for being a little bit mushy and probably is mushy, I could feel it. But I'm gonna grill it today and I'm hoping that that's gonna take some, out, some of the mush out. And being so mushy, sometimes it's hard, it's annoying to get the bones in your mouth, especially all the little pin bones that run for, on this dorsal fin and the bottom dorsal fin. So here's a little trick. After you scale it, you can cut along the top all the way to the top and leave enough skin on because the skin is what's going to make this trick work. You just score it all the way to the back and you cut down to the bone. All right, you do that on both sides. Leave enough skin, cut down, and you just want to hit those bones with your knife. Once you do that, you can just cut right in front here. Cut down a little bit. Now you should be able to pull the entire backbone out in one piece because that skin should theoretically be holding everything together. Let's see if this works. There it goes. So, you got all these little bones out. Now you don't have to deal with those at all when you eat it. So take those bones out, put it to the side. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom. As a matter of fact, all these, we can just rip them off. Right there, that's the collar, that's the perch collar. Not much meat on it and not worth my time. So I'm gonna rip them off on both sides. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom here, leaving enough skin, but also getting down deep enough where we're gonna to touch the bones, all right? Oh, it's just the opposite on this side. I'm gonna pull from the bottom way, and I'm hoping everything just pulls out here, and it does. See little tiny bones? Don't have to deal with these things anymore. Give her one more rinse. You know these collars? I'm not going to let them go to waste either. I'm going to cook them on the side, but it's going to be easier because they're not attached to the fish, so it'll seem like less bones when actually it's not. Now I'm kind of in the mood for something spicy, so I want to let this marinate for a good, good hour. 
let that soak into the meat. So I'm gonna just pour a bunch of oil into my Ziploc bag. Just all of it. That'll be enough to, to cover the fish. I'm using canola oil, I don't know if that matters. And next I'm just gonna throw in some seasoning. This is some spicy garlic with crushed jalapenos. I'm in the mood for some spice, a little kick. So let's, let's dump a bunch of this in. It's gonna be marinating in here, so I don't think, we really can't do too much, so here we go. Yeah, yeah let's get a lot in there, man. We're gonna do, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be tasty. Nothing bland today. All right, I need to rinse off these collars again. No sand on the collars, going in. Oh gosh. Yeah, if I drop it in the sand, that could happen. All right, let's rinse it off. Collars going in. And the fish. Get all the sand off. How's that look? Pretty good, right? And do several scores on them. All the way down to the spine. Deep scores. I don't know if that matters or not. I just want a place where that marinade can get into the meat. That's why I'm cutting deep. We'll see how it turns out. All right, no sand. There we go, into the marinade. As little bones as possible. Just make sure it's all coated. That's it, we're just gonna let this sit here. Just soak up in its own oil, its own juices cover it up so a dog or a seagull doesn't get to it. Let's go fish a little bit more, catch another big one. Daniel's already caught two 12 inches. It's time for me to catch one of those big ones. Our fish has been marinated enough. Now there's two things we have to do. First, we gotta make a level ground. And then we've gotta light these briquettes I'm using mesquite wood. This is ready to go. And this stuff burns extra hot. I forgot exactly what the temperature difference is, but it's way hotter than normal charcoal briquettes. So even though I have a whole bag full here, I'm not going to keep the fish directly over it. I'm just gonna light this bag, the whole thing will light on fire, and the briquettes will light on fire. And then, really cool thing, I've got this grill. I, had, I got this thing two, two years ago, two, three years ago, and it's so cool. It's perfect to use in the sand. I'll show you how to use it in a second. So it's got these metal slides you put on the side here. And this slides down the whole grill. And this is called a bison grill. Or it's made by a company called Bison. So you just slide it on here and that's what keeps it flat and straight. Do the same thing on this side. All right. Now, see, there we go. It's pretty much the grill. And then you got these stakes you put in the ground and you rest the grill on top of it. Pretty ingenious. Now, this is a little bit dirty. I guess I forgot to wash this thing before. I'll make sure I don't melt my waders. Now I'm gonna clean this off with just some lemon. I'm gonna cut this lemon in half. And at the same time, that's gonna clean my knife. I'm just gonna rub it right here on the grill. Just clean it up nicely, that lemon juice. So clear this up and then I also have some aluminum foil I can rub on it. Grill is nice and clean, ready for some fish. Now it's gonna take a little time for this wood to heat up and I'm not gonna put the grill right over it. I'm gonna disperse the wood a little bit. I'm gonna prepare some avocado. You know we gotta have that avocado. And this one is straight from my sister's tree in Santa Barbara. And if they're fresh like this, oh my goodness, they are so good. It's a little soft. I hope it didn't get smushed in my bag. It, it did a little bit, but at least one side is good. We'll give the good side to Daniel. All right, let that heat. Let's get some more water. Just keep things clean and not sandy. And it's not gonna take very long at all to cook that fish. Best avocado from my sister's tree. So good when they're fresh. 
All right, everything's ready to go, but these charcoals are too hot, so I'm gonna get the big ones away, keeping track of it all, because we're gonna put it out with water once we're done. But yeah, man, that, that stuff burns hot. Now I've got the fish here ready to go, and boom, that's all there is to it. And this is hot, okay? I don't want it to cook too fast. If I want it to cook faster, all I gotta do is push the grill deeper into the sand, and if I want it to cook slower, all I gotta do is lift it up and pinch around the legs and that way it won't drop back down. So we're gonna let this cook slowly. But once it does get hot, I do wanna make sure that I move the fish just a little bit because if I let it cook in the same position until it's done, the skin is gonna get stuck on the grill and the skin will peel off. But if I move it a little bit, it should be easy to flip later on, no problem. Heck, digging, man. I know it's cooked, it's done. I don't know how the seasoning is. I never had the seasoning before. It tastes like perch. It tastes like perch. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, a lot of people, they're fun to catch, but I don't know how fun they are to eat. Um, I mean, it's pretty good though. Seasoning is really good. Yeah. I don't know, perch is, is it's got its own flavor, you yeah. know? Yeah, and texture. Yeah. It's good and it's it nice. It's good though, yeah having just caught it too. Mm -hmm. Good day out here. Simple recipe, cool grill. Well, yeah, I don't know if it's true, but it seems like it was today with the tide, that bite. It was, it was pretty good this morning up until about an hour after high tide. So, you know, three hours before high tide, one hour after high tide, and then the bite kind of just died. 